Okay. Welcome back to the Los Alamos Daily Post uh, Candidates Forum here in the PAC 8 studios. And our third and final question will go to candidate Mark Clay. And that question is, Los Alamos Public Schools officials recently addressed the county council advocating for new property leases related to the Trinity redevelopment site project to provide additional money to the district. How much responsibility do you think the county should assume in supporting the schools here in Los Alamos and what specifically would you do, would you recommend the county do? The county uh, and the uh, schools are connected obviously because we're all interested in the youth and the children of the community, which is who we're obviously teaching in the schools. So it's in the best interests, in my opinion, of the county to be connected to the schools as, as much as they can, as much as they legally can, to try to help the schools succeed, which in turn helps our students succeed. Uh, I know that there's been some very innovative thinking about how uh, helping the county, uh, excuse me, the schools generate revenues off of lease properties. Uh, I, I would like to see more of, the, of those opportunities. Uh, I would like to see any opportunity where we can partner with the end result of helping all of the, uh, all of the schools in, in the community. Um, I, I know uh, there are rules about the, the separation of what the county can do and what the what the schools can do, but there are there are creative ways to, to work on that. Uh, so. Building on on some of the ideas we were doing for for the Trinity site, for the for the airport basin, for all those things where we're trying to find creative ways to help the schools succeed and generate revenue. Because you know, uh, whatever we do in the town affects our tax base. It affects how much money we get from the state of New Mexico for for contributing to the schools. All those things are all all have impact, and they're all tied together. Uh, so. Because we, you know, we run the county, and uh, the county council runs the county, and the county staff and administrators, it's it's, it's a duty of ours. As as Vincent said, you know, a jewel of our community is our is our, our schools. Uh, I think we have a very close partnership with those schools, and trying to keep that moving forward. Uh, uh, I, I can't claim to know all the answers today about all those possibilities, but I know that you've got to think creatively and, and think w with diversity, uh, which we've already started doing. So I would build on those, and I would, I would continue on that tack uh, to do whatever we could to help generate revenues. I mean, I know with the declining revenues in the federal government, I would expect that revenues subsidies from the government to the schools will, will likely continue to decline. So we have to think of ways to make that up. Uh, we don't want to sacrifice losing our programs in the schools like some other communities in New Mexico where they lose their music programs or their art programs or all those things because those would get cut first. So, And those programs are what help contribute to the overall life of the, of the children and the whole community. So again, I, I, I'll, I'll say that it's, it's a duty, I believe, of us to help those schools be successful any way that we can. Thank you, Mark. Pete Cheehy, how much responsibility do you think the county should assume in regards to the schools? And what recommendations would you make? Most people in this town recognize the value of good education. I owe my scientific, my satisfying scientific career at the lab to good science teachers in high school and college. Tax revenues spent wisely on education are a good investment in our future. The county can and should support its public schools to the extent allowed under New Mexico's state-funded educational system. The Trinity site development will provide important lease revenue to the schools. I supported this project, and I support maximizing the amount of money provided to the schools from this source. The, the funds which the county might give up in direct lease income will more than be offset by increased property and GRT tax income from that development. We were talking about affordable housing, and there are opportunities where school-owned land, such as a lot just across from Aspen School, could be acquired by the county. That would provide some, some funds that the schools can use, and the county could use that land uh, for affordable housing. Uh, Habitat for, for Humanity might well be able to put a good fourplex in there. That, I think, is a win-win situation. We have to keep within our budget, but uh, that is one of the county's objectives. It lets people live here. 
that gets the economy better, um, helps the schools as well, just like the Trinity Project. I support the excellent work of the Los Alamos Public Schools Foundation to help our teachers and students be the best that they can be. Local college branches such as UNMLA play an important role in the community, from advanced placement courses for high school students, undergraduate and graduate courses, small business development, and continuing education. UNMLA deserves county support and a fair share of state college funding. Thank you, Pete. And Roger Waterman. Thanks. The first of the four goals of the, uh, the Economic Vitality Strategic Plan, which the Council accepted in 2010, is the, to re support and retain LANL as the area's best wealth-producing employer. Um, that implies a lot of things, but I think the number one thing in terms of attracting young families and the best and the brightest to Los Alamos National Laboratory is the quality of the public educational system. Without it, we won't be successful in attracting the young people that we need to, to, to come to the lab. I think the but at the same time, I think the council took the appropriate action in tabling the motion to change the agreement uh, between the county and the schools. It's not that it, it's the wrong thing to do, it's just the wrong time to do it. My reasons are similar to those expressed during the council meeting and the budget hearings. There's no assurance yet that there's going to be any income from Trinity Site in the short term. Even if all goes well, dollars uh, will not be coming in from that site for 18 to 24 months. And the schools and the county's agreement took uh, many months to negotiate and it's just too early to modify it before we have a known reason to do so. That doesn't mean that the county can't do some other things to offset and stretch the school's budget. Maury Pongratz the other night at the budget hearing said that there were services, non-educational services provided uh, by the schools that were mandated as part of their function that had, would find county, had county interest and were serving the county as well. I think the county sh can look at offsetting or assuming some of those personnel expenses in terms of providing county services as well as school services. The schools have excess land. I think the county could take an aggressive stance in terms of helping the county find, ca helping the schools find a beneficial income stream earlier rather than later from that, from those land, um, from those excess lands. And I think the county uh, can also actively avoid using geo bonding capacity uh, for county purposes. That retains that bonding capacity for schools' uses. And um, I, uh, I think the schools are one of the most valuable assets of this community, and we need to do everything we can do to cooperate legally with them. Thank you, Roger. And Ken Johnson, former eight-year school board member, right. how much responsibility do you think the county should assume with the schools, and uh, what are your recommendations? Well, there are lots of barriers, legal ones, why, that handicap the county in anything that they can do. But an example of something creative was the demolition of the Trinity site. Originally, that was a 50-50 split between the schools and the county. The county paid the whole bill, saving the schools over $3.5 million. It is, it's events like that that make a difference. Our school system is great. I mean, it's important that they be successful. My daughter graduated from here. She's now working on her Ph.D. at the University of Colorado School of Medicine. So, you know, it, it, for me personally, it was fantastic. So we need to continue that. Um, <clears throat> So another important issue, though, with the schools and, and the funding, it needs to be remembered that they do not benefit from any GRT. Grocery tax does not help the school in any way, shape, or form. They get the $8 million from DOE, and everything else comes from the general fund of the state based on the funding formula. Now, the funding formula, you know, the high price of gas is good news, bad news. For the individual, well, it's bad news. For the state, who gets royalties from it, it's good news, and they'll pour money into schools. For Los Alamos, that happens to be a bad deal, because what has come back up is a change to the funding formula, which if passed, for example, will reduce the school budget by $2 million a year. Only one of two districts in the entire state who would get hit this way. The other one loses 20000 we lose almost $2 million. 
all other districts win. So you can see there's a lot of incentive to pass a new funding formula. So the schools are constantly under assault. So anything that the county can do creatively, legally, benefits the school. And the school is very important to the laboratory, as has been mentioned. You know, a new family coming in, what are their alternatives? Espanola? I don't think so. Santa Fe? If you were listening, I don't think so either. But Los Alamos is, is the place. It's a I think in the last national ranking, ranking, it came out 600th of all high schools in the country. That's, and then everything else must be good, too. Otherwise, that couldn't happen. So it's important that the county, in any way it can, financially support the schools. Thank you, Kim. And now we'll go to Kristen Henderson. And Kristen, as a mother with children in the school district, uh, how do you feel about um, how much responsibility the county should assume in helping the schools, and what might some of your recommendations be to the county? Well, as a mother, I absolutely am in favor of an excellent school system. There's no question. And frankly, as a real estate agent, I am incredibly in favor of an excellent school system. But just as a citizen who lives here, there is just no question that our excellent school system is 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 critical to the future of the lab. I mean, there is no question. When I talk to people who are thinking of coming, their number one reason most of the time is our school system. They a lot of times live in Santa Fe, and once their kids are getting school age, they move up here for that reason and because of they would like a quality of school that they can't get in the public schools down there and they may or may not want to pay for or could afford in the private schools down there. So um, I, I still do see people who choose not to come to our community at all, even though they've received an offer from the lab. But that, um, if they do come, a lot of times it's for the schools. Um, and, of course, for personal reasons, I want an excellent school system for my girls. Um, in terms of that specific question, uh, uh, the, in general, I, of course, I think the county should do absolutely positively as much as we can for the school system. We still have to take into account the, the county's own budget, but um, there's probably not much else that's that's more important than helping to support the schools where we can. In terms of that specific issue of Trinity Site, um, in general, it looks like a good idea, but I do think we have to keep in mind the fact that we are in we're not in a vacuum. A lot of times we live up here and we think we're all by ourselves up here, but the reality is we are in the state of New Mexico, and just like Ken was talking about, we're often targeted to be losing some money, and I think we have to be careful how we go forward with the county helping the schools, that it's done in a way that's pretty consistent with how other communities are doing it, so we don't put a big target on our backs about it. Um, we don't want to you know, make that little gain and then have some huge hit down the line, but there are lots of ways, possibly that, but also other ways we could do it. Uh, you know, Some ways would include what some of um, the other candidates were talking about, is shifting some of the costs that, that the school has, the non-school related costs to the county. Um, that's possibly a fantastic way to do it, especially if they're doing it in other communities and it's not going to, you know, put a target on us. But, um, uh, you know, another way possibly would be where some of this land that's coming from the DOE might instead go to the schools and the county can help pay for some of the utilities on there or the infrastructure on there. And then the, can the school, like Trinity Site, can use it in some way to have some rent revenue. Um, the truth is that our funding for the schools is going down dramatically from the state, and they are always trying to figure out, are, are we cutting this art teacher or that music teacher? Is it going to get to that? You know, it, it, it's not a theoretical problem. It's a very real problem with our schools. And for our schools and for our community, I, I think it is important that we find ways to help them. Thanks. Thank you, Kristen. And Vincent Chivarelli, as the son of an educator, Marie Chivarelli, who um, served on our UNMLA advisory board for four years, um, where do you stand on this, this issue? I believe that the county and the counselors must take a leading role in identifying uh, new sources of revenue that our public schools can use for operational expenses. Uh, the schools are in a difficult situation. The budget is tightly constrained. And although in recent years uh, there have been um, property tax increases uh, for capital expenses, uh, the overwhelming majority of that money cannot be used for operational expenses. It's devoted to new infrastructure, new high school, new wings on the middle school, and things like this. So we have to help our schools identify the most important revenue source for them, and that's operational revenue. And this is the reason why 
I introduced the Ordinance 597 so that we could modify our agreement with the public schools so that the schools could keep all of the lease money derived from commercial activities on the Trinity site. And we know that there's strong interest in an anchor store in moving and building a 110,000 square foot superstore on that site. That could generate about $460,000 per year. And we could do that in the near term. The only reason not to modify um, our agreement with the schools and not let them keep all the money right now, the lease money, is if we have another purpose, another desire for the Trinity site. I think this community has made up its mind what it wants to have on the Trinity site. And it wants a big box store and with the revenue going to the schools. And I happen to think that the agreement that we worked out between the county and the schools, 52% of the revenue going to the schools, really shortchanges our public schools. We have to keep in mind that the county will receive property tax and GRT revenue from private commercial activity on the Trinity site that will more than compensate for whatever lease revenue we cede to the public schools. This is the right way to go. Let's have our schools, and if we're committed to moving forward with Trinity, we could make this change right now. Uh, with regard to the future, other possibilities for uh, development. I would like to see other kinds of commercial developments similar to um, a Trinity site with lands that are at A19, a portion of A19. Um, but the key element to realizing a benefit for our public schools is a land swap. Before we did the Trinity, before we uh, entered into the agreement with Trinity site uh, with uh, the developer, there was a land swap between the county and the schools. The, count, the schools gave some land on DP Road to the county, and the county gave the schools most of the land on the Trinity site. I think we should do a similar kind of land swap for a portion of A19 or other lands that are in the county so that the schools could benefit from activities through lease revenue. They'll become the owner of the land, and they can get the lease money. That's the approach I want to take, and it's one of the reasons why I'm running for re-election on the county council. Thank you. Vincent. And now we come to the last segment in tonight's forum, and that is the closing remarks by each of our candidates. And we'll start with Ken Johnson. So if, if elected to the county council, I would promise to be, because that is my style, to be a thorough and thoughtful and timely decision maker. Um, in my opinion, the county council all too often lingers and lingers and lingers and lingers and has trouble making decisions and moving forward, and I would like that to change. I would also like, based on my school board experience, that um, that the county be more trans county council, excuse me, be more transparent to the community. For example. Um, I would propose that there be fewer meetings of shorter, more meetings, sorry, of shorter duration so that um, I think you would get greater public input because who wants to stay there well past midnight waiting for your favorite topic to appear? That is ineffective and it effectively excludes members of the community from participating. And so that's what I think I would bring to the council. Thank you, Ken. Roger Waterman. I served uh, for three terms um, a long time ago, and I found it one of the most challenging and educating experiences of my life. And it made a difference not only f uh, to me, but I, I hope it made a difference to the community. Uh, we we uh, did a lot of challenging uh, things, undertaking the taking over the fire department and, and acquisition of the utilities uh, electrical system. Um, and trying to find a way to get independent of, of federal support. I think with uh, too much money can be just as big a problem as too little. It's something that you have to be prepared for. And businesses make the same mistakes as governments do. Um, if there's too much money in the business, they lose their creativity, they lose their aggressiveness, they lose their, they lose their ability to, to make economies. Um, as a business person, I, I hope to bring a, a realistic sense to the community in terms of the local economy and hope to um, see the glasses as uh, half full, not empty. 
And I think a lot of the things that have happened in the retail community in recent times were circumstantial and not an indication that the community is, is suffering some sort of a business turndown. I think there's a lot more opportunities now than there have ever been, and the, the future looks great. I, I look forward to having a, an opportunity to serve if given the chance. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Pete Sheehy? I'm not ashamed to agree with people of the other party, and I do agree with Roger that the glass is at least half full here. Uh, we may not be as prosperous as we once thought we were, but by no means are we broke, and we can pay for the important things. We just have to prioritize. I've been active for many years at all levels of government, such as the recent successful effort to keep Los Alamos in a single legislative district. Since 2008, on the Planning and Zoning Commission, we've dealt with some contentious issues. We're asked to balance the goals of the community and the rights of individual property owners. In long PNZ hearings, I think I've shown the judgment, patience, stamina, and good humor to make a good county councilor for this town. As I said earlier, we need to focus on communication and prioritization. We need to listen to people and tell people honestly and clearly what the issues and choices are. We need to make some hard choices in our prioritization. My priorities are public safety, basic infrastructure, and education followed by careful in investment to grow the local economy. If we manage these things well, then we can afford the amenities we'd all like. We have to select the most important projects to start now because we're going to have to wait on some others that our budget won't cover. That's what priorities are about. Our county government spends a great deal of money every year. We need to make sure it goes where it'll do the most good. Tax revenues on, spent on infrastructure, education, and economic development are good investments for us, and they'll pay off. But we have to be totally honest with the people about the costs and benefits and earn their trust if we expect taxpayers to support such investments. I ask for your support. Come to my website. Tell me what you think. I'm eager to discuss what I could do as a county councilor to help make this a better community. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. And Mark Clay? I've lived in the community for over 30 years, as I mentioned before, and I've taken advantage of a lot of the opportunities that the community has provided. I'm running for council because I like to help with improving those opportunities, improving those options, improving possibilities uh, for the people of this of this uh, city. Uh, I. I bring energy, I bring enthusiasm, uh, I bring core values, I bring responsibility. Those are things that you can count on me for. Um, I bring a commitment to soliciting the input of the community as we move forward on all of our improvement efforts and initiatives. Uh, I bring physical responsibility, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, those are the kind of things that I bring to the table that will help move this community forward, uh, help our youth, help young families, all families in this community to try to, as a collective unit, move forward and make this place a better place to be. Uh, as uh, my colleagues have said here, it's not a bad place to be now, uh, but it can be a better place. And I want to be involved in that. I want to share in that energy and enthusiasm. Uh, I want to work with colleagues that are, have the same passion as I do uh, and take advantage of that collective energy of the community that is coming in all the time and help us move forward. So that's what I bring, and I look forward to your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Our community needs a strong leader to represent our citizens on the council, one who has been uh, tested and tried, one who will not succumb to pressure, and one who will remain steadfast in the face of strong and determined opposition. I feel that I possess these leadership qualities. In my opinion, lavish spending on bloated government buildings, such as a municipal building and a justice center, and expansive road projects have done little to address the critical issue that faces our community, attracting more young families to live here. I have steadfastly opposed expansive road work 
that would create unnecessary obstacles for traffic and hurt our local businesses. Our local government should be the ally and the enabler of small business and not become an obstacle to small business. And I think many times, inadvertently, we have been more of an obstacle than an ally. I support uh, expanding high-tech jobs and creating new high-tech jobs in our community. One way that we can do this is to continue providing robust county assistance to technology and research companies through the LIDA program so that we can create more high-tech jobs such as those that were created uh, through the New Mexico Consortium for, uh, for research in biofuel technology. I would like to see us, through the LIDA program, expand the, both the research park and the Entrada Business Park. In closing, I have a proven track record on the council of being an independent thinker who has the energy, ideas, and determination to help our community achieve its goals. There's more information about my campaign at my campaign website, sheravelliforcouncil.com. I would very much like to continue to be an advocate for you and for all of our working people, our families, and our small businesses. And I would ask for your vote and your support to serve another term on the County Council. Thank you. Thank you, Vincent. And Kristen Henderson. So in, in my closing remarks, uh, what I would like to say is uh, this is a great town, and it has fantastic, wonderful things, and we love those things about it. We love that it's a small town. We love it's nestled in the mountains. We love its excellent schools. Um, but I do think we need to have a vision for the future. I think that, you know, coming out of being a government town and then, you know, in the 60s becoming privately owned, I, you know, I think we've made a lot of steps. But at this point, it's time for us to pick a real vision and a real future for our town and have a plan for it and work towards it. And we're fortunate that we had some funds to do that, and we may well continue to have those funds. But we need to do it in an organized fashion, taking into account all of the people in the town. Um, so obviously, I'm absolutely trying to be here to represent families, but I also feel like there's a lot of people who would like that kind of progress and that kind of vision, and I absolutely feel like I could represent those people on the council as well. Um, I really have four platforms. Um, one is I really think we can make this kind of reasonable progress. Another is that absolutely we need to have fair process. We have the type of government we have. It's an at-large council. We all represent everybody. It takes a lot of community involvement to get your voice heard, and I want to help encourage as many processes as we can to let those uh, all those voices be heard. Um, I agree with Ken. The meetings should be shorter. They should. Unfortunately, that probably means there's going to be have to be more of them, but that way you can participate. I think I can't imagine in this high-technology town why it is we don't have a big screen with you know, 25 people on gotomeeting.com at the meeting. There's a lot of ways that we can encourage more involvement. We could have them during lunch. I know every counselor I've mentioned that to freaks out, but there's a lot of stay-at-home moms who can go to those meetings, and that would be fantastic. Um, the other two things, I think it's a great town for great families, and I want to burnish all those wonderful amenities that we do have. And finally, when the lab wins, we, let, we win. And there's no way we can have a great future without having the kind of great town that encourages the people who get their their jobs at the lab to want to come here and and frankly I see a lot of other people who who aren't with the lab who want to come because it's a great town and that will encourage that too thank you thank you Kristen and with that it concludes the first forum of this political season and it's been brought to you by the Los Alamos Daily Post uh, live here at the uh, PAC 8 studios and I want to thank all of you candidates for participating and I want to thank my fellow panelists Greg Kendall with the Los Alamos Daily Post Stan Premack with the Los Alamos Commerce and Development Corporation and the Los Alamos Chamber of Commerce and Greg Kendall and myself will be back in about 10 minutes to do about a 15 minute live Ken Clark and Kendall's weekend preview to let you know all of the activities coming up in our town this weekend and there are a lot. So thank you very much for joining us.